The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Popolizio is a wondrous thing. And for you pack wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. Back in the saddle again with a brand new episode of the Pack Mentality Pop Ins Podcast. I'm your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt. And here to give his perspective on all things NC State Wrestling is the head coach of the Wolfpack, Pat Pablizio. Brian, it's good to, good to see you again. I feel like we've spent a lot of time together here the last several days. Pat, we have. And, you know, you went to go get lunch. You didn't offer me lunch. lunch. That is no, the, this is called on the run. This is a smoothie. That is Maybe the, we get him as a sponsor. You told they me do, to do come over. Job. Told me, let's tape. I had to get something in me. Yeah, that's true. Went right from practice. I tell the guys, 30 minutes, you got to put something in your body. It's been about two hours. Well, I ate yesterday, so I guess I'm skipping a meal today, but we're all good. I mean, you look lean, though. (laughs) Let's get right into this episode. All the listeners know they should already be subscribed to the only podcast in D1 Wrestling hosted by a school. So find us on all those podcasting platforms. But good weekend of action for NC State. Two duels. Two different arenas, two Wolfpack team victories. NC State improved to 11 and 2 in duels on the season, with a 20 to 10 win over Brown. Followed up the very next day with a 26 to 10 win over West Virginia. Pat, this is the second time in a matter of weeks you guys have had back to back weigh-ins. How was it handled this time around? It was good. Uh, this was part of the scheduling. Guys did a, a really good job of keeping their weight. In check, and and you know this time of season, that's what we were looking for is to conditions condition guys um, with their bodies, and you know uh, more of a routine. And I think we did a really good job of that this past weekend. So it showed in in the way they competed. The duel against Brown was the first ever for NC State at the PNC Arena, which is home to the men's basketball team and the Carolina Hurricanes. What did you and the team think about wrestling at that big venue? It was great. I think it was uh, definitely different for us and similar to the kind of arena we're going to compete at at the NCAA tournament. And, you know, I I love Reynolds. To me, that's probably the best wrestling venue. Obviously biased to it, but I think it is really one of the best wrestling venues in the country. It's loud. It's right there on top of the mat. Um, but every now and then it's good to change it up so guys aren't in a in a normal routine. And, you know, that's kind of what we're going to see when we go to the NCAA tournament. You're going to be in a bigger arena. It's going to be set up like that. Um, just got to continue to grow things. And I thought we had a decent crowd there. And it would be nice to, to, as time goes on, grow our fan base. And that's what this was all about. Something new we tried after the West Virginia duel, a meet and greet for all of our season ticket holders coaching staff and all the guys came to interact and i heard a lot of positive comments from the fans about getting to talk to the guys how important are events like that to continue to build the fan base and reward those who buy season tickets it's big you know and we're going to continue to do different things like that um it was really action-packed weekend for us with with that and you know it's one of those more people get to know our guys i think the more they're going to become fans of our program because our guys do a great job um they got great personality and uh, good quality kids all together. So once people get to know what these guys are about, it's easy to jump on board with them. I do have to apologize, though. This weekend was brutal on me. I think I did hit the flu. Um, so I had to bail out of there pretty quick, and I wish I could have spent a little more time. But uh, I, got, I got some good sleep, and uh, I'm, I'm almost back to normal. It took 24 hours, but I, I'm, I'm feeling better now. That's important. I, I, know, I know you were worried about that. I could tell. You had to battle through a little adversity, you know. We yes. thought you just had. I, we thought you had other things to get to. Yeah, so. right. I was. Uh, I think I was uh, recovering. Just uh, I don't know. Now I feel a lot better. Uh, got Will hooked me up with some good meds. Doctor Jacobson gave me some good meds, so it knocked it out of me pretty quick. Back, but I definitely get the. I got the flu. I think back to back duels. They're tough on the coaching staff too. Yeah. Right. Uh, 
On to action on the mat against Brown. Uh, we saw redshirt senior Sean Files wrestle up at 133 pounds and scored a tech fall win. But some fans might not know he had to wrestle that match a little bit on the lighter side. He actually had to weigh in at 129. What was the reason to be behind having Sean up at 133? And can you tell our listeners why he had to weigh in so far below that weight? Yeah, well, you know, we're going to play around with our lineup until we get everybody back and we're full force. The luxury is we got some depth at some weights, and we just have to uh, piece things together uh, for the time being. Sean did a really good job going out there, going up a weight class, and, I mean, he's that good. You know, he can he's capable of beating anybody. It doesn't matter if it's 25 or 33. And NCA has, you know, some safety precautions with uh, the descent plan, and it, and it's good. It, I think for where we're at with the sport now, guys have done a really good job keeping their weight in check. But you know, you got to follow the weight descent plan. And if you want to be back down in a week or two, you know, you can't weigh in too high. So uh, that was part of the reason why he weighed in where he was at. Because we ha- we will have him back down for the App State Open. He'll get four, hopefully four matches in there, uh, heading into uh, the end of the season. We need to get his eight match total and uh that's the plan right now is get him down there for the app state open and then we'll see where we're at once Tariq's ready to get back in the lineup we'll we'll be full force again with sean at 25 Tariq at 33 and uh renan is uh if we need renan he can wrestle right now but w- there's no need uh we'll, we'll take our time with him killed my injury update question oh yeah okay okay we'll but get to that in a little that, bit we, we can touch more that's good uh so when Sean was at 133, redshirt freshman Zerk Storm got the two starts at 125 and split his matches. Good opportunity for Zerk over the next few weeks as it might be a little while until we see Sean again at 125. How has Zerk progressed with more matches under his belt in his first campaign here? He's improving a lot. Um, he had a little bit of a letdown against Brown. Uh, I think he, he knows that, but he stepped it up big time the next day. And and that's what I was wanting to see. I want to see how he responded. Um, and we just got to get him... You know, he's a freshman in our lineup, and we want to see consistency out of him. But he's tough, hard-nosed, hard-working kid, great, smart. Um, and he, he brings a lot of value to our program right now. And hes I love his style of wrestling. He's aggressive, and he's fun to watch. You know, he can score at any given time. So I think that's just one of those things you come along with freshmen. You know, he's, he's improved a lot since he's been here. And with time, he'll become more consistent. You already stole my thunder. Uh-oh. Can you provide updates on Tariq and Nick and how they're yes. progressing? So both guys are, are working out and training right now. Um, it's different training for until they're 100%. Renan, if we need him to wrestle, could wrestle. But we are going to take our time, ease him back into some things, and uh, just get him back close to 100% as we can for the – focus that we want and making sure um we strengthen things that need to be strengthened um and Tariq it's going to be once they tell us he can go we plan on him being back uh timing we won't know it'll be week to week but we obviously have a couple duels that we were figuring we'll throw him in the lineup for if, if he's ready to go and if not we're going to have to have guys step up and deliver and that's what's making our team a little bit of adversity here right now. It's been a while since we've had to deal with this, but I like the way our guys responded this past weekend, and we're going to have to do this every week until uh, we're 100% again. This past weekend, you guys were down three guys, three top 12 guys in the country, too, who were at different weights or out of the lineup, but you also had to make a change at a fourth weight. Uh, redshirt senior Jamel Morris has now been inserted into the lineup at 141, and all he did against Brown in West Virginia was skip back-to-back 16 nothing Tech Falls wins. Um, Jamel's been at a few different weights here, but he's now at 141. What do you expect from him moving forward? Well, yeah, Jamel stepped in. He did a phenomenal job getting those two wins the way he did, dominant fashion, looking real confident. So he will be our starter right now at 141 pounds until uh, I think I like what I see. The confidence is there. Uh, we'll, we might wrestle some other guys at that weight, this, not this weekend, next weekend at the App State Open, see how they do. But he's shown that he's uh, – He's the guy right now, and, and going out and doing what he did this this past weekend, I really liked his offense and how aggressive he was and 
he looked very composed. So as time goes on, I'm excited to see what, what he brings to the table for this program. But right now we need him where he's at and need him to step up big time. Important weekend for the Buller t- Twins. Uh, at 165, Thomas, he got two top 20 wins, very dominant in both. And his brother Daniel right behind him got a decision and then a tech fall over WVU. That's the kind of aggressive wrestling you needed to see from those two. Absolutely. And that's what we've been preaching to those guys for a while, and it's finally clicking. And I think you're going to see more of that. You know, And that's what's great about a, a long season that we're in. It Sometimes it takes some guys to – Certain points of the season where the things start really clicking for him, and that's what we saw this past weekend, and I think we're going to build some confidence on that. And that's going to be the style of wrestling that those guys are going to bring to the table and being really good and tough on top like they were in high school, and that's what we expected out of them. And I was happy that those guys wrestled the way they did because uh, that's well needed at this point for us. And uh, still, it seems like there's no clarity at heavyweight. Both freshmen Colin Lawler and Deontay Wilson wrestled in one match over the past weekend. You said before you're waiting for them to make the decision for you. But as a head coach, when does the decision have to be made for the NCAA championships allocation and preparing for the ACC championships here? Yeah, we're we're getting, you know, you're allowed to uh, select your starters every other week. You can kind of change that up i have a feeling right now that's going to be the case until one of these guys decides they want to be the guy at this weight um we really need somebody to step up go out there and compete to the level that we expect them to and you know it was we're just at that point as far as the program where we're at every every guy that we throw on the mat we we expect them to win and unfortunately this this past weekend that wasn't the case um and it It'll take some time with with some younger guys, and we're being patient. But you know, at the same time, I, I, we want better results there. Those guys know it, and uh, they're working hard. So it's it's not lack of effort on their part. It's just something with the experience. You know, that becomes very valuable. And we're hoping with a little more time, these guys are are going to be that much more ready. Um, but yeah, that's a weight class. We really expect big things out of both those guys, and. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll figure that out by uh, some big wins that they can they can get over the next couple of weeks. And moving ahead to this weekend's action, NC State, NC State will host Drexel on Saturday, January 19th in Reynolds at 6 o'clock. A new opponent for you. NC State has not faced the Dragons since 2008. Any connections to their staff, and how did this duel come about? Yeah, I think it was when we put some feelers out to get some new teams down here to uh, – to Raleigh, and they were willing and able to do that. They have obviously some some good individuals, and and had a good win last weekend. So it's another team that's up and coming. Azevedo has done a phenomenal job over there. So we just wanted to see some some new guys, and uh, this is a good opportunity to do that. And one, you know, we figured we're going to return the the date next year, so we can get up in PA as well and and wrestle up there. We got a lot of guys that are from close to that area, so it's an opportunity for us to get on the road as time goes on. And you know, we needed that extra home home duel this year, the way our schedule was, and it just so happened to, to fall into place for us like that. The Dragons are going to come in with a four and four dual record, a trio of ranked wrestlers, number sixteen at one hundred sixty five, number fifteen at one ninety seven, and number sixteen at heavyweight, and this is the last non-conference matchup before you guys get into ACC duels to close out your season. How important is it for the team to go out against Drexel and continue to build confidence going into conference action? Absolutely. You know, you, you think you hit it on the head. They got three ranked guys right now, and we're without two starters. So you look on paper right now, there's five matchups that are going to be real real competitive. Um, I, I'm sure there's going to be others, but as – as far as the rankings go, you know, those are matches that they're probably going to be favored in. So we know what we're going to be in for. And um, we're going to need guys to step up this, this coming weekend. Uh, guys are well aware of that. So I'm excited to see how we respond and we'll carry that momentum into the ACC, uh, dual meets and, and hopefully week to week, we'll see where we're at with getting other guys back in our lineup. Kind of putting you on the spot here, and this isn't to criticize, just want to get your opinion. Um, not just because of what happened this past weekend, but, it seems like there's a little controversy, hands to the face call, refs are calling it. I know it probably went against you down in Florida. What are your thoughts since it has been a point of emphasis for officials this season? Yeah, it's it's got to be consistent. That's the hardest thing right now. You know, 
one ref calls it this way, another ref calls it that way. One ref doesn't call it early in the match, but because it happened two or three times, he decides to call it. So it's just one of those, uh, you know, if we're going to call it, let's call it every second that it happens. Um, and if we're not going to do that, then let the, let these guys wrestle. So it is. It's frustrating. And I think it's even harder on, on people that are becoming fans of the sport, watching it to understand what's going on. And just the more basic we can keep scoring, I think the better it will be to grow our sport. And to me, that that kind of really involves a ref to dictate the outcome of matches. And I think that was the case what you saw this past weekend. You really haven't come over the scores table this year to challenge some of these calls. I'm, you know, you used to come over, visit, challenge the referees a little bit, you know. But you're really staying in that bench area we this still, year. We still have a couple duels left, okay. so. Okay. And we can get into a whole discussion about a lot of NCAA rules and such, but I'll get you out of there on this. A couple of top 20 wins. Got Thomas Bullard booked as a guest on this week's podcast. I chickened out on having both Bullard twins at the same time because I admit I can't tell them apart. Now you have to be honest, and I heard their opinion on this. Can you tell Thomas and Daniel apart after I, three only, years? Only time I can tell them apart is when, when one has a black eye or when they're down to weight. Other than that, they get me every time. It's very challenging to uh, tell them to apart because a lot of times they're wearing the same thing. Um, but I can. When Thomas is down the weight, I can see a total difference between Thomas and Daniel. But when they're when they're close to weight, they're they're tough for me. But I do know now, I have a little secret. I won't tell them how I can tell them apart, but I got it. I got it. Uh, got to figure it out. Thomas did tell us he thought you at least tried telling them apart, so he was appreciative of that. Yeah, when they're looking right at me, I can tell them apart. But if I get a side view or they're, like, behind, it's, yeah, it's not happening. Okay. Well, they've been here three years. you still got two more. So. Two more. I'll get it figured okay. out. Give me some time. Pat, great having you on. Sorry to ruin your lunch plans, but a great next couple of weeks of Wolfpack home action, starting with Drexel. This Saturday at 6 in Reynolds. Good luck to you and the guys. Appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to getting everybody in Reynolds. A new guest to the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast, NC State starter at 165 pounds. And one half of the Buller twins, redshirt sophomore Thomas Buller, joins us in the podcast. Thomas, great to finally catch you after practice and have you on as a guest. Yeah, it's great to be here. Now, I'm assuming this is Thomas. I did text you and not ask you in person, so I'm a bit more confident I didn't mix <laughs> you and your brother up. But I have to admit, after the West Virginia duel this past week, and I asked the wrong bowler to do media. So a bit nervous when it comes to you two. I can't tell you guys apart in certain situations, but backs to me in warm-ups, not quite as confident. <laughs> but you two are beyond nice when people aren't sure who is who. How often do people get you two mixed up? Um, pretty often, uh, the closer people are with me, usually they can tell us apart, but, uh, I mean, even some of the coaches mess us up sometimes. So it's, it's pretty often. Would you agree? Singlet, you can tell apart Warm ups maybe not as much. Yeah, definitely. Once we get on the mat, a lot of people can tell from our uh, different wrestling styles, but, uh, if we're in warm ups, it's the same thing. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. And you said you brought this up. So right off the bat, going to put you in the hot seat. Which NC State coaching staff members are not able to tell you two apart after <laughs> three years in the program? All right. So uh, on a good day, I'd say they all can. But uh, most days, I'd say Pat struggles sometimes. <laughs> uh, I'd say uh, Donnie, can, Donnie can tell us apart. Adam can tell us apart. Obi, it's hit and miss. But uh, yeah. So, Pat, if he can't tell you apart, is it a general Bullard, or does he even try? Um, it's a general Bullard sometimes, <laughs> but uh, he, tr he, he tries for it sometimes, okay. and he usually gets it right, but uh, I don't, it's, it's hit and miss. So I was going to say, give us some advice. How can we tell you two apart? Um, obviously, which one, so it's pretty hard, but there's a, like, there's a scar next to my uh, eyebrow that you can kind of see or a mole on my face, but that's small stuff. We're, we're kind of hard to tell apart. He's a little bigger, obviously, but besides that, it's we're pretty similar. How did your parents do growing up? Did they share any stories with you guys? All right, so growing up, my mom color coded us a little bit, so <laughs> I was red and Daniel was blue, and you know, so I went out. We went to a red school, so. Okay. <laughs> and when was the last time you guys tried to switch on anybody? Um, it's been a little bit. Um. In high school, we, like, mess around with the people sometimes, but uh, usually that's more of the Morris's things. They uh, they switch on people all the time <laughs> when they're introducing each other. Like, yeah. I'm Jamal, that's Jamel, and it's almost always the reverse. So 
Uh, usually, me and Dan will stick with uh, stick with ourselves, though. I assume you guys are roommates. Yes. Who else are you guys rooming with? Uh, Trevor and Nick. How do they do? Uh, they're great. They know us. Um, I mean, obviously, everyone messes up occasionally, but like if our backs are turned or something like that, but they they know how to tell us apart. Okay. And- I'm not going to name names, but some other members of the Wolfpack have dubbed the Bullards as the messiest pair of teammates <laughs> now that Michael Machiavella no longer has a locker. True or false? Um, I don't know about messiest, but um, far from the clean, cleanest locker, <laughs> so uh, I, can't, I can't complain. Okay. Uh, from Lawrenceville, Georgia, Archer High School, were you and your brother a package deal to college wrestling teams, or did it just kind of turn out that way? Oh, uh, no, we were always going to go to the same school. Um, just when we started getting recruited we were like all right well this is awesome we're gonna go take these opportunities but uh, we're gonna go together Uh, we we grew up training together and I believe that's been a large part of our success uh, pushing each other and being able to um, compete on and off the mat Um, so going to the same school was very important to us uh, while we were getting recruited and in high school as a senior, you were at 170 and Daniel was at 182 now here at NC State you're still one weight class below him how was it decided, even back to your youth days, who would get to go at what, what weight class? So generally it was um, it was just whoever was a little bit bigger. Daniel Daniel's my technically younger brother, but he's always been a little bit bigger, um, except my freshman year of high school. But I don't know. It's just usually who's bigger. We actually, most of the, my senior year, we uh, I was 160 and he was 170. We bumped up to the end, but... Were there ever was there ever a wrestle off? No, no, no. We uh, that's that's asking for trouble. <laughs> um, we only re- when we were like really young we wrestled, but after a certain age, our parents were like, "All right, you guys aren't gonna." That's a bad idea. <laughs> we talked about how to tell the twins apart from looking at you guys. What about wrestling styles? What would you say you're better at, Daniel? And then. Flip that around. What might he be better at than you on a wrestling mat? So Daniel's a little bit more. Um, he he's a little more aggressive with his shots. Um, he he shoots more. I usually try to counter uh, what the other guy does. Like I'll I'll push the we both push the pace a lot, but uh, he definitely takes more shots. On top, I'm I'm more likely to throw a leg in. He's uh, more likely to do like crab wrestling and stuff like that. It's it's small stuff, but when you know what you're talking about, it's it's definite differences. And you had an interesting first season here at NC State. You were set to redshirt back in 2017 and yeah. even went to a couple of tournaments on the redshirt circuit. But with an injury, you were called into action in early December and became the starter at 157. What did you think of that situation back then? I was – I mean, I was, any chance to start, I was uh, psyched about um, – it, it was a tough weight cut to make it for the first couple of times, but I was like – this is what I came to do. I came here to compete. I came here to break the starting lineup and do big things uh, for Wolfpack. So I was psyched for it. Very, very happy to get called into action. In that freshman season, you were an NCAA qualifier going 21-12. Looking back, how did that season go for you after being called up? Um, I think it went all right. wasn't quite what I, uh, what I hoped for, um, but uh, it, went, it went fairly well. Obviously, I want to do more than just qualify, but because uh, I, w- I went 0 and 2 at NCA, so not uh, not exactly what I wanted. But it was still a, a learning; it's a part of the learning process, and it's uh, it was a good season. And back into redshirt last season, but you worked your way up to 165. How was the adjustment going up a weight class? Um, it was it was pretty good. We lifted hard all over the summer. Um, but I was I was cutting a lot of weight to get to 157, so it wasn't wasn't too hard to adjust uh, just to 165. How's the weight cut now to 165? Um, I've, it's healthy. It's it's good. Um, it's not to the point where I'm too light, but I uh, I don't struggle too much. Does your brother get to eat more than you? Yes, he does. He also had to lift a little harder in the summer, eat a little more um, to try to get his natural weight heavier than uh, mine. And I thought Pat had an interesting point back on an earlier podcast. This is the first season both you and Daniel are in the lineup at the same time as you guys took alternating retro seasons. Is that something that helps you too, knowing both of you are going through the exact same thing in duels compared to open tournaments and such? Yeah, I do believe it's something that helped. I've always grown up competing with him. We've always gone back-to-back weight classes. Um, 
knowing he has my back, we're going back to back. Um, it's just, it's comforting. It's uh, it's something I like about being in the lineup with him. And you're at 165. He's at 70, 174. I know it's right after your match, but how much are you able to watch him? And the Bullards are kind of quiet, but do you get vocal at all during his matches, or does oh. he get vocal during yours? Um, I'm definitely. I'm probably more vocal than Daniel. Uh, <laughs> Well, he, so he's warming up for my match, so he still has to focus. But I'm after uh, my match, I'm done, so I can yell as much as I want and get into it. I can uh, let loose a little bit. But, um, no, I, I definitely get into his match. Um, if, if I'm getting a little too loud, my teammates will quiet me down. <laughs> but, no, I'm, I'm definitely vocal during his matches. Have we started a duel where he was first and you were last? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't. So that'd be so. kind of an interesting dynamic. That there, that too. would be, yeah. But this past weekend, in a pair of home duels, you really cashed in and had a statement weekend. Two ranked opponents, two ranked wins. You seemed really to get into your offense fast and got, I think, four near falls. How much confidence does that give you moving forward that you're able to rack up so many points against good competition? Uh, definitely a lot of confidence. Um, this has been kind of the the breakthrough week, weekend I've been looking for it. Um, I've been training hard, just get, keep on working, keep on working. And uh, it's nice to have some uh, success finally paying off um, against some ranked opponents. Yet another opportunity for another ranked win this weekend is the Wolfpack host Drexel on Saturday at 6 o'clock. You're slated to face number 16, Jarrell, a junior who's 14-4. What are you going to have to do to win your third straight match against a top 20 foe? Just go out there and wrestle my match, uh, work hard, push the pace. Uh, same thing. Would you rather get a takedown or a near fall? Oh, near fall. Okay. <laughs> makes the match go kind of quick sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You can, <laughs> if you put them away, then it's done. You score more points. Any frustration or have you noticed teams aren't picking down on you as much as they have before? <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely frustrating because I can't get to my um, – can't get to my turns on top as easy but um they also can't escape so it, it's it has its bonuses and takeaways but uh i don't know it's just part of the match and i think at this point you've kind of come to expect that sometimes so you've already adjusted styles for yeah the second, third periods yeah it's something i've been working on uh taking more shots being more offensive on my feet and still one more non-conference duel with that Drexel matchup this weekend. But looking ahead to your conference slate, how tough is the ACC at 165? Uh, it's pretty tough, but uh, not worried about it. Take one match at a time. I'm not a guy that looks ahead and gets stressed about the, uh, the opponents I might have. Um, they're all just out there to compete. The score is always 0-0 going into a match, so... I think 165 is a lot different, too. You really haven't faced these guys before. Everybody in this weight class is new. Do you like a new guy, or do you like facing someone that you faced already? Um, I like new guys. Uh, I like some variety. I mean, if I have to wrestle the same guy, it's not a big deal, but I think I prefer variety. Thomas, it was great to have you on the podcast and get a little insight in the world of being a twin, and <laughs> you really put some pressure on me because now i got to book Daniel for an interview, but... Good luck this weekend and for the rest of the season. Wolfpack Nation, they really enjoy watching the Buller wrestle when you guys are on top and getting those turns. Thank you. Go Pack. I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Pop-Ins podcast covering all things NC State Wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack Wrestling fans, go Pack. The Pack Mentality Pop-Ins podcast is produced by the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to Matt Talk Online.